This is a special stretchy rubber rope. It's good for pulling. We're standing on a bridge. It's good for holding things up. They're both structures, and they're hooked together. You ready? Does that mean we can start the show now? Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bill, 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 Bill. Bill Nye the Science Guy. Science rules. Bill Nye the Science Guy. Inertia is a property of matter. Bill, 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 Bill. Bill, 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 Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bill, 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 T Bill, minus Bill, seven Bill, seconds. Bill, 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 Bill Nye the Science Guy. Brought to you by the Tension and Compression Company, makers of fine structures everywhere. I'll bet you're standing or sitting on a structure, because chairs and floors are structures. So are ropes and uh, sliding doors. Structures include things you might not have thought of, too, like cat whiskers. Let's face it, structures are cool. Now this is the model suspension bridge of science. And like any structure, its shape depends on what it does. And its strength depends on what it's made of and its shape. Why does it look like that? Form follows function. Oh. These thin cables are held up by these thick posts. Thick, thin, very thin. Now the reason these wires can be so thin is that they're always pulling. Now, this wire's a little thicker because it's holding up all the thin ones. But it's pulling, too. And when it's pulling, a scientist, maybe a scientist like you, says it's in tension. Now, notice that all the wires are held up by this thick post. This post has to be thick because it's pushing. Scientists say it's in compression. So, tension, compression. Now, what about the model bridge deck of science? Is it in tension or compression? Is it pushing or pulling? Well, really, it's doing both. Whenever something is bent, one side is in tension and the other side is in compression. One side is pulling and the other side's pushing. Tension and compression are what makes structures work. Structures are a tension and compression party. Whoa! Here's something fun you can do at home. Make a bridge any way you want. I think I'll do it this way. Look what a great bridge you can make with just plain old paper. are everywhere and can be almost anything. Not just buildings and bridges. Did you know that? Structures come in almost every shape. The shape of structures depends on what they do. And their strength depends on their shape and what they're made of. Form follows function. Dig? Yeah. The shovel's a structure, too. Keep shaking, science guy. The sapphires will fall to the bottom. What? Ah, structures. Did you ever think that structures could look and smell so nice? <sighs> ah. Plants are natural structures. Naturally. Air and water pressure help the leaves and petals hold their shape. The stems are in compression. Tree trunks are in compression. And notice they're thicker at the bottom than they are at the top because they're holding up the weight of all those branches and leaves. And notice that even the very highest, thinnest branches are thicker at their base than they are at the end. And it's because they're holding up the smaller branches and the smaller branches after that and the leaves and so on and so on. Science and nature. Nature and science. Structures. Here's how you can make an egg tower. All you need is an egg and a couple of bottle caps. 
Take an egg and put it between two bottle caps so that you have a flat surface. Then, balance a book on top. Eggs are strong structures because the weight is spread out all over the eggshell. This is an egg experiment you uh, can try at home. Exactly. Uh, so dumb. Yeah, I'm trying to get away from it all for a couple days. Right. Talk to you soon. This is a dome tent. Now, why is it a dome? Because domes give you the most amount of space inside with the least amount of material. A dome holds itself up the same way an arch does. It supports its weight by directing the force of the weight out and down. It's kind of like an arch in three dimensions. See? You know what else is like a dome? An egg. Well, really, it's like two domes, end to end. Wonder where else we'd find a dome around here. structures always remind me of tension and compression. I'm gonna finish this structure if it's the last thing I do. Get in there, Brick. I said get in there right now. I said, whoops. Oh. Come on, come on, come on. Get in there. Oh, I'm so sick of this. Come on, hurry up. Let's finish this. Uh, get in there, you stupid brick. Uh, ah! Huh? Hey, do it yourself -er. That job requires a brick hammer. You're using the wrong tool. Oh, well, let me tell you, I can use any tool I want. Now we must fight. Ha, huh, there, you had enough? Huh? Let me give you a leg up. <laughs> I must run away. I'm not through with you. Breaks of Fury will continue in just a moment. How many times have you needed a fork when all you had was a spoon? And how many times have you needed a spoon when all you had was a fork? Well, now you can have both with the amazing spoon. Structures, structures. Structures are everywhere and they have a lot in common. Structures often need a leg to stand on, even highways. See how big and thick those support piers are? Does that remind you of anything? Um, elephant legs? Elephant legs are big and thick, too, because they're holding up a lot of weight. Elephant legs and road piers are in compression, so they have to be stocky. If you put an elephant on toothpicks, it wouldn't work. But structures like telephone wires can be thin because they're in tension. They're being pulled on. But the structure that supports the weight of the wires, the telephone pole, has to be thick so it doesn't buckle. Structures! Move the tension to the ends of your body and mind. Allow yourself to feel hollow in the middle. Be thick only where you need to be. Now, exclusively on Stressed Out Video, Johnny Stress is proud to announce his at-home tension and compression work-through. With Johnny's help, millions have been able to overcome their stress issues to lead a more structured life. When I'm too thin, I get a little stressed. But Johnny's helped me maintain my ideal shape. Johnny's helped me feel stress in all the right places. I need to eat this right. Thank you. What? You are a structure. Believe it, and you shall become it. The rope that raises and lowers a flag is thin because it's in tension. The pole that holds it up is thick because it's in compression. Rope thin. 
pole thick. Tension compression, you with me? <laughs> My name is Susan Varger and I'm a material scientist and what I'm studying is Adobe. Adobe is basically mud. When we're gonna make adobes here, we take this mud mix and it's put in forms and, and then taken out of the forms and allowed to draw it. The bricks are like the bones of the building. They're part of the, the structure that, that keeps the building standing. I think I'll make my bridge a different way. Look, my bridge works great too. My name is Rocco D'Angelo. I'm a facility engineer here at the Verrazano Narrows Bridge. And basically, I'm in charge of uh, all the engineering and all the construction that goes on at this facility. The Verrazano Narrows Bridge connects Staten Island with the borough of Brooklyn. Uh, both boroughs are in New York City. cable is divided into 61 strands, and each strand is comprised of 428 uh, wires. Uh, there are a total of 26,000 wires per cable. I might not really be a, a scientist, as, as uh, you all think of scientists and mixing chemicals and stuff like that, but there's a lot of science and there's a lot of math courses, a lot of physics courses that engineers have to take. Hands are structures too. They've got parts in tension and parts in compression. Also, human hands have opposable thumbs, thumbs that are opposed to the fingers. And opposable thumbs are good for, uh, We make bonds. There's 206 bonds in the body, and we make every one of them. Hey, bonds are structures, too. I'm going to cut this bone in half here for you. Uh oh Voila. You got to be pretty, pretty accurate with the cuts. They uh, will send the doctor's models a lot of times. We'll fracture the bones for them, and young doctors will practice on putting them back together again before they actually work on an actual person. And the big seller this week are spines. We make heads, lots of ligaments, spare femurs for those broken leg kind of days, lots of jaw bones for those who like to talk, dog bones for your favorite canine friend. <laughs> If you thought building an egg structure with one egg was cool, now I'll try it with three eggs. Take your eggs and place them between two bottle caps. Arrange them in a triangle. Then set something heavy on top. Three eggs can hold more than one egg because the weight of the book and the soup cans is spread out over all three eggs. Eggs, the one of nature's most beautiful structures. And that's no yolk. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, we start building our uh, sand sculptures, structures uh, with a base form, and what we do is we try to build a bigger base 
to hold up and support the rest of the structure as we go on. I love getting dirty. You always want to be in a position where you can carve comfortably. Pull it off that way. There you go. Okay, now we just take these little guys off of here. Well, right now, what I'm doing is just giving our castle a bridge. Plenty of structures to be found right in your own backyard. Look, a structure. This is a structure. This is a structure. So is this. This is a structure. Hey, I want one. Oh, would you like an edible structure? <laughs> Ropes are structures that work really well under tension. Pulling. Watch it, careful. Oh. Pushing, they're not so hot. Tension. Compression. Tension. Compression. Tension. Compression, compression, compression. So, why do some structures stay up while others fall down? Failure. Now you might think at first you want a building to be rigid, as stiff and strong as possible, but that's not necessarily true. Take a look at the building sway simulator of science. You get the idea right away that by making a building flexible, it's got a better chance of holding up in the wind or in an earthquake. Now a big building like this on a windy day will sway as much as a meter an earthquake, it might flex more than that. By making it flexible, we give it a better chance of staying up for a long time. So how did we come up with this brilliant flexibility idea anyway? Well, you ever heard of trees? Oh, pretty good design those trees have. They're built to be flexible. Same with a building. See, when a building falls down, it can't get up. is pretty good. And I like this strawberry. But I've got another idea. It works great. And it tastes great too. Eggs are strong structures. I bet these eggs could even hold up cinder blocks. No, I bet you're right. Set them down one at a time. Eggs are amazing. <laughs> Let's talk about stress, baby. Compression and tension, see. Let's talk about buildings, bridges, teeth and their shells, all these things. Let's talk about stress. Let's talk about stress. Let's talk about stress. Let's talk about Let's talk about stress. It's all the best things in life we know, like flakes of snow, and even our hands struck up the band as we talk about stress. That's a matter of hand. Cause the buildings, bridges, things we depend on to keep on standing, even though we stand on them. They don't fall down, cause the people that build them understood about stress. 
with the National Science Foundation. <laughs> you gotta understand how much I love this ant bit. I love the ant bit. Galileo, you know, was the first guy to think of this. That's a long story. You ready? I'd love to tell you about Galileo, but I'd rather get this bit shot. Insects and spiders are usually small. Why don't we see big ones, you know, as big as people, cars, or houses? Well, take a look at this. It's our fine, upstanding model ant of science. See, thin ant legs are ideally suited structures for supporting an ant's lightweight body. But what if we made them bigger? Well, as they get bigger, they get heavier. Now, their legs get bigger, too, but not fast enough to support the ant's weight. That's why we never see giant horror movie-sized ants. They can't exist. They wouldn't have a leg to stand on. <laughs> 